I dedicate this to my dear brother Yankee on his marriage to Chana. May they be blessed to build together a beautiful, eternal Jewish home. This week's Torah portion, Shemini, teaches us all about the laws of kosher. All animals that have the two signs of chewing their cud and split hooves, the Torah categorizes as kosher. All others are not fit for Jewish consumption. The first and most obvious question is, why must Torah forbid the consumption of any animal? What did the Torah find so unfitting about a horse? What's wrong with bacon and eggs? The 12th century sage Nachmanides suggests, you are what you eat. Therefore, if you eat a carnivore, you will take on a little of that callousness it takes to kill another living creature. In other words, eating a flesh eater will cause you to become insensitive to other people's feelings. The Torah therefore instructs Jews to only eat vegetarian animals because being merciful is part of being Jewish. From this perspective, the laws of kosher can be viewed as spiritual nutrition. Just as there are foods that are good for the body and foods that are harmful, there are foods that nourish the Jewish soul and foods that adversely affect it. The great scholar Maimonides explains this mitzvah from a more medical standpoint. He suggests that any foods that are potentially harmful to us, Almighty God, in His boundless kindness, prohibited. We can take this a step further and suggest that after slaughter, animals are fully checked for any sign of unhealthiness. Additionally, all blood, which is a medium for the growth of bacteria, is drained. Likewise, milk and meat digest at an unequal rate and are therefore difficult for the body. Others suggest that this is connected with self-growth. If you can be disciplined in what and when you eat, it follows that you can be disciplined in other areas of life as well. Kosher observance requires that one must wait between milk and meat and we may not eat certain animals or combinations of foods, even when you're hungry. All of this instills self-discipline and enables us to elevate our spiritual side by making conscious choices over animalistic urges. There's also a school of thought that suggests it's all about tradition and to prevent assimilation. One of the keys to making a Jewish home Jewish is the observance of keeping kosher. When we keep kosher in our home, our attachment to Judaism and the sacrifices that we make become ingrained in our children's minds forever. And with food being so often the focus of social events, keeping kosher provides a built-in hedge against assimilation. For many, it can be said that the bridge between past and future is the spiritual aroma of a kosher kitchen. But none of these explanations get to the depth of why we must keep kosher. For ultimately, kosher is in the category of mitzvah called chukim, Mitzvahs given without a reason or explanation. In reality, it is precisely because it was commanded by the creator of our bodies and our souls that the kosher way of life will obviously be beneficial to both. More than a commandment, a mitzvah is an opportunity to connect to Almighty God. How awesome is it that even in the most mundane physical acts, like eating and drinking, we are afforded an opportunity to connect with God, whereas others are of the mistaken opinion that to connect to the divine creator, you must engage in a spiritual activity. Kosher teaches us the exact opposite. Our kosher diet, food and drink may actually be what is most consequential to feel and experience our beautiful bond with our loving creator. I wish you a good Shabbos.